Hello, guys. Um, hope you, you can hear me properly. So um, I'm from Lakshya Digital. Uh, I'm Dilip Suthar, uh, uh, working as an art director uh, and heading the hard surface team at Lakshya Digital, carrying 15 years of experience in the gaming. Uh, so I started my career in 2007, uh, mostly work on many uh, racing games, FPS games, mostly on the console side. Uh, worked on many uh, vehicle, hard surface, environment organics, character, all the stuff. So here are some of the games that I have been work associated with. Uh, so I have associated from Froja franchise from last 10 years. Uh, worked on Hello, Prey, Flight Sim Simulator, uh, Calistruct Protocol, Days Gone Control, Spider-Man, all those games. So here are the basic topics that I will be covering today. Uh, so basic understanding of game life cycle. This will be like, I would be just uh, discussing very roughly, though we we uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but just to set the context that what we what actually we work on. So uh, then we'll be talking about the game art content, how we uh, segregate the game art content in uh, in our studio, and uh, uh, what are the different workflows that we follow on uh, hard surface projects, and we'll go into much more detail on the workflows. So this part will be a uh, bit technical. I, I, uh, if, it, if that we are too technical, just let me know. Uh, and uh, at last, we will be just discussing on the workflow for we uh, workflow we are following for the vehicle projects. Some basic fundamentals just to compare with the workflow that we are doing. And then we'll have some question answering, and then we'll end our session. So uh, this is just a basic understanding of the life uh, game life cycle. The here this I want to show because I just want to make a point that where we actually fit into the entire cycle. So it's all starting in your uh, 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 game idea, all in your mind. Then you bring down your idea on paper. Then you push the idea uh, to the development then all this marketing and all. So this is a, uh, roughly this is the workflow that uh, any game follows. What we do, uh, so we are into game development. So there are a lot of other departments uh, apart from game art. And what we do, we, we, are do, we do game art as a company. So uh, what my team do basically, uh, my team uh, make uh, game art content of uh, 2D art or uh, VFX, uh, all those content for games. What is game art? So suppose, let's take this in an example, that uh, if client provide any uh, concept such like this. So first we segregate uh, this into different uh, domain, like uh, uh, something like this, that, okay, uh, all the red area, uh, we uh, uh, give it to all environment leads or team. Then all the green areas, we divide it into uh, hard surface. And blue and other characters and the animation and VFX. So uh, after giving to all this to the specific team, then we decide the budget and uh, specification based on the importance of the asset in the game. So uh, this also, uh, so whenever we are deciding any budget, we just need to make sure that, okay, what if particular asset, how long it will be staying to the, your screen or how, uh, how much area is covering. For example, this gun is covering the uh, one fourth of the screen. So this will be important asset for us. Or we can say this is a hero asset for us, but uh, the asset sitting near building or anything, those are not very important. So those will be a uh, low priority asset for us. So from vehicle also, uh, there are a lot of vehicle that you can see in environment, but those are not very important as compared to any racing game, because racing game you see this asset very close, and also you have uh, you mostly uh, change a lot of uh, thing into the uh, in game also. 
same to any simulation game like flight sim uh, uh, simulator where uh, aeroplanes and all are a hero asset for us so here we'll be discussing on the uh, overall workflow that we follow for uh, uh, creating this kind of assets so here we'll, i will be just discussing mostly on the console uh, assets uh, uh, which have a higher budget so the first standard workflow is uh, uh, first is standard workflow the other workflow is a weighted normal workflow and the third is a mid poly workflow so all this workflow are not very new they are uh, using you are using this from uh, decades now uh, but they they are we are using in a specific scenarios so we will be just taking through all this uh, workflow and we'll see that how this save our time and all so in a standard uh, generic workflow so basically you will be creating a high poly model and you are, you will be baking normal map uh, from your low poly model so this is a standard workflow that we uh, everyone follows even if you go any art station or all if you see any game art asset you will see this uh, workflow everybody is using so it's a very standard workflow so this workflow is like you will be creating high poly model something like this then low poly model you will be using this then you will bake and texture now this is a second workflow that we follow and this is not a, a very um, common workflow that usually game uh, uh, game follows so there are very specific requirement for this so in this workflow we actually not creating any high poly model but our low poly depict as a high poly model so as you can see in the right side that okay it still is a low poly model but it's uh, uh, giving a feel of this is a high poly model so let's uh, i would like to go into uh, 3d software and just to make this point clear much more one second sorry so this is a 3ds max i hope everybody is aware of this software so here we will be just creating a simple model just to uh, let you know that uh, how this workflow uh, used this will be a little technical uh, uh, let me know if this become very technical uh, if you need more explanation i will happy to give that so let's create one simple plane so how this Thing work. So when you apply a edit normal, you will see there are uh, blue handles, right? All these four points. So those are normals. So in our first method, what we do, we actually bake all this blue from high poly to low poly right this is this is the standard rule and what this uh, handles do is if i for example if i see this thing from top it could look flat but if i move this handle to any any other uh, 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 section angle so you can see the gradation coming right so this is still not a high poly model but still is like a, uh, looks like a cylinder but ultimately this is a flat plane there is no normal map applied on this by doing just tweaking the handles you will get this result Okay. 
this to this. So uh, as you can see there are a lot of gradation coming if I need to uh, make it flat what I will be doing I will just stating out this handles this and this right so you know first So here you can see that in the first model you have used a lot of polish to get this edge highlight, right? But in the second model, by adding by tweaking the just normal handles, you can get the similar result. So in the first step of uh, uh, first workflow, you actually baking all the high poly normal into low poly model that uh, give you the result of high poly model but in the second one uh, you are just tweaking the normal map you actually don't really need to create any high poly model so this workflow uh, uh, have his own pros and cons that we'll uh, see in the next stage take this uh, one more example so this is a very bad shading uh, if you just need to correct the shading and you if you just edit the normal handle then th for that see uh, editing individual normal handle would be painful so uh, over here we will be using one script that will do a job for us As you can see, uh, all the shading errors went on. So before editing the normal and after editing the normal, this is the result that we get. And usually a lot of uh, games use this technique just to avoid not creating any high poly model or they want to save that creation high poly model and baking time. Because creating high poly model and again low poly model takes a lot of time, right? So this is one, and the third workflow. So this is a weighted normal workflow. Uh, we'll come to that. Uh, what are the reasons that not every game follow this workflow? Uh, that we'll understand in the third third workflow, comparing that uh, both side by side. So this example that we saw that you will be just editing the normal handle and you will be getting the high poly result. The third workflow is a very common workflow in all the games that uh, we are working on, uh, at least on a racing game or simulation game, follow this workflow. Uh, it's called mid poly workflow. In this workflow also, you don't really need to create any high poly model. Again, we are not saying that we are not using normal map. Normal map you will be still using just for the surface detail not for the uh, age highlights and all. So in this workflow, you will be just adding supporting loop to get the high poly detail. So let's again jump to the software just to understand this thing proper. So 
this is your first workflow where you're creating high poly and low poly model and baking your high poly model to low poly this is your editing uh, normal handle but when you editing any normal handle you will see that color get change right uh, this is a uh, average normal that software uh, automatically uh, give to you but when you editing any normal it will become a green what that means is after this you can't edit the model so we need to make sure that if you following this workflow that this model not get changed later on so what that mean let's try to understand into this particular thing so what i did over here the, the same workflow i just uh, as you can see um, edit normal all are green right that means it already edited right what it does is if i add or remove any age right for example if i just simply add a age so you can see the sh entire shading get messed up so this is a proper shading but if you edit edit any anything over here it will get changed so that is a, this is a huge problem with this workflow and not all the games follow this one but yeah there are some mobile games that uh, the racing game that follow this one because they still want to uh, optimize the mesh and don't really need to create any high poly model because if you are creating high poly model for such uh, uh, asset like vehicles so vehicle is a huge asset right and if you create high poly for vehicles and that you will end up taking a lot of time so uh, but for consoles when uh, we know that okay we have a good budget we actually not going by this workflow instead of we are going by the mid poly workflow so in the mid poly workflow what we are doing we are just editing supporting edges on the highlight area that's it we are not we are not actually curving this thing this edges are just placed on a flat surface just to hold the shading right and in this model the beauty of this that even if you edit this thing your shading and everything will be stays the same there's nothing get changed so that's the reason that uh, uh, we prefer this workflow So let's take an example of uh, how this workflow we are using on the vehicles. So suppose uh, we are creating this bumper for this car. So the first step will be uh, blocking the scale and proportion for the entire car. But here we are just taking about the uh, bumper. So in this phase, uh, we are not blocking the shape, but we are blocking the scale, overall scale and proportion, right? Uh, by using limited poly. Scale and proportion would be very easy. After this, uh, we started blocking out the shapes. Now we start. See, as you can see, we added some lot of details, but still, uh, you see, the uh, mesh is very low. After this stage, uh, then we start refining the model even more, curving out the detail. After this we add supporting edges for the highlight edges edge highlights and and this is the this is the this is the model that directly go into the game without any normal map so the first stage is your blocking scale and proportion then blocking shapes establishing basic line flow and poly distribution 
because poly distribution and, uh, is very important because here you don't have any normal map that uh, uh, that reflect uh, that you uh, for a smoother surface that you have a normal map, but for a smoother surface you have to have a good poly distribution to get a good reflection. Then the third stage is defining all the shapes, finalizing line flow and poly distribution. Here we are not chamfering all the edges. Uh, still, this will be the last at the end. Then we'll uh, go into final shading, age extrude, and turn edges for better reflection. So this is the workflow we follow for the uh, vehicles. Basic fundamentals. Uh, even though it's a uh, 3D, but if you can compare to any 2D traditional process, it's more or less same. So here is an example uh, that even though if you want to create any uh, good art uh, sketch, you will be starting with the blocking proportion and all, right? Then you will slowly blocking the shapes, defining shapes, then you jump on the shading. You actually not shading the first place. You finali finalizing the uh, shapes and then you start the shading. Yeah. Here is one more example that uh, same blocking scale proportions shapes, defining shapes, and final shading. And more or less is the same workflow that we follow on 3D. Right. So here are some of the uh, assets that we have uh, created with the same workflow. Uh, flight sim, planes, that kind of this. So I say that uh, even though you are not baking, you are not creating high poly uh, for, uh, you are not actually uh, using. No I'm saying, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, we are not using normal. We are using normal, but just for the surface detail. So as you can see, the bolts and all those are just a surface detail, right? Those are not baked from any high poly model. They are created directly in Substance Painter. So this is again a good example, entirely created through the uh, uh, mid-poly approach. There are other approaches also. In this uh, room, there are other approaches like trim textures and all, but those are most uh, more of an environment workflow. So we are not adding in this one, just to, we are not just to avoid the confusion. Forza cars, definitely uh, this workflow we are following on Forza car from decades. Uh, so when I joined uh, Drua Interactive back in 2010, we are using the same workflow. So over there, because uh, racing, uh, those budget were very high for specific cars. But these days, because our console are now more pro uh, powerful, we are using the same workflow on the other assets also. Basically, we re really want to reduce the time on the creating high poly model and baking them. Same workflow. So all this uh, inner detail and all, those are uh, tileable textures that uh, have been created from certain designer. But there are no high poly model created for this. Entirely mid poly approach. So here I want to show you the wireframe. So as you can see, this is very dense, right? Because we have a really good budget for these cars. So line flow and poly distribution are essential for this because uh, all the reflections are coming directly from the uh, low res mesh even though this is not a low res mesh, but uh, this is a final mesh that with no normal maps. You can check all the engine part also following the same approach. No normal map applied over there. Everything is from the low res uh, gay mesh. This is a combination of the approaches. Uh, there are some pieces, the, uh, the 
uh, major pieces are uh, through the mid poly approach but the surface detail and the smaller detail still be done from our traditional uh, standard approach this is an example of a uh, standard generic workflow that that we usually see in any games standard workflow so guns because we have a lot of smaller details right so uh, doing those thing in mid poly approach would be very expensive for the game uh, but definitely uh, there are some games that we are working today that following the mid poly approach because consoles become actually very really powerful so because really they wa they actually want to reduce the time because whenever you are creating any high poly model you are actually uh, uh, putting a lot of time because first you are creating high poly then again you are creating the same model for low res for in game mesh so we just need to cut down the time that okay what if we do don't create a high poly model so this mid poly approach now started getting into we uh, weapons also so guys any questions uh, hope this is not too technical i try to like be very generic yeah yeah sure so uh, it's depend upon the, as i uh, showed in my first screen that um, if your asset is covering half of the screen right and it's a it's the size of the uh, asset is also very big then we decide that uh, let's go by the mid poly approach if the asset is small definitely all the enormous props still we are going with the standard approach because those stays in one area and because prop uh, usually we take 3 to 4 days right in that four days we uh, we not really bother about creating high poly model but uh, assets like cars planes those mid from mid poly approach also is take 100 days to cover uh, create the one vehicle right if you add a high poly then it will take 200 man days mm -hmm. so we need to cut down the time right on this one so this is how we uh, and there are some clients that now started following the uh, as i said mentioned that Uh, for a weapon also they started using the same workflow because they also want to cut down the time overall yep virtual reality mid poly approach uh, there are some uh, for example we are working for uh, uh, population 1 for uh, quest uh, quest 2 so uh, over there we are using the same workflow mid poly sorry frame yeah frame rate is very important uh, now console is becoming very uh, so frame rate not just uh, 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 imp impacting through your mesh is also impact through your uh, how, how many how many or how many maps you have applied or what resolution you are applying right how many set of textures that you are uh, targeting how many shaders you are applying so there are a lot of areas uh, that we can optimize this workflow changes uh, based on the requirement for for the game so for vr especially because you can actually hold the gun pretty close right and in vr your from a screen if you play on a screen any fps game you still is a 2d format right but in vr actually you're seeing very up close right so there we decide okay we need to get uh, give a really good poly count for that and also this depend upon the uh, uh, front area back area lower area the areas are not visible like for example if you are working on any fps game if you are building any uh, weapon so right side mostly is not very important uh, left side is more important because mostly you see the left area right but on vr you can choose the uh, both right then both side become very important 